So I've, I've spoken with No Chomsky, who's been kind of um, one of the many people that are critical of uh, large language models being able to achieve general intelligence, right? And so it's an interesting question that they've been able to achieve so much incredible stuff. Do you, do you think it's possible that large language models really is the way we we build AGI? I think it's part of the way. I think we need other super important things. This is philosophizing a little bit. Like what, what kind of components do you think uh, in a technical sense or a poetic sense? Does it need to have a body that it can experience the world directly? I don't think it needs that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say any of this stuff with certainty, like we're deep into the unknown here. For me, a system that cannot go significantly add to the sum total of scientific knowledge we have access to, kind of discover, invent, whatever you want to call it, new fundamental science is not a super intelligence. And to do that really well, I think we will need to expand on the GPT paradigm in pretty important ways that we're still missing ideas for. But I don't know what those ideas are. We're trying to find them. I could argue sort of the opposite point that you could have deep, big scientific breakthroughs with just the data that GPT is trained on. So like, I maybe, think some of maybe. it is, like if you prompt it correctly. Look, if an oracle told me far from the future that GPT-10 turned out to be a true AGI somehow, mm -hmm. you know, maybe just some very small new ideas, I would be like, okay, I can believe that. Not what I would have expected sitting here, would have said a new big idea, but I can believe that. This prompting chain, if you extend it very far and and then increase at scale the number of those interactions, like what kind of, if these things mm. start getting integrated into human society <laughs> and starts building on top of each other. I mean, like we, I don't think we understand what that looks like. It's, like you said, it's been six days. The thing that I am so excited about with this is not that it's a system that kind of goes off and does its own thing, but that it's this tool that humans are using in this feedback loop. Helpful for us for a bunch of reasons. We get to, you know, learn more about trajectories through multiple iterations. But I am excited about a world where AI is an extension of human will and a amplifier of our abilities and this like, you know, most useful tool yet created. And that is certainly how people are using it. And I mean, just like look at Twitter, like the the results are amazing. People's like self-reported happiness with getting to work with this are great. So yeah, like maybe we never build AGI, but we just make humans super great. Still a huge win. Yeah, I said I'm I'm part of those people. Like the the amount, <laughs> I, I derive a lot of happiness from programming together with GPT. Uh, part of it is a little bit of terror. Of can you say more about that? <laughs> There's a meme <laughs> I saw today that uh, everybody's freaking out about uh, sort of GPT taking programmer jobs. No, it's uh, the, the the reality is just it's going to be taking like if it's going to take your job, it means you're a shitty programmer. <laughs> There's some truth to that. Maybe there's some human element that's really fundamental to the creative act, to the act of genius that is in, in great design that is involved in programming. And maybe I'm just really impressed by the, all the boilerplate but that I don't see as boilerplate, but is actually pretty boilerplate. Yeah, and maybe that you create like, you know, in a day of programming, you have one really important idea. Yeah. And that's the contribution. That would be, and that's the contribution. And there may be, like, I, I think we're going to find, so I suspect that is happening with great programmers and that GPT-like models are far away from that one thing, even though they're going to automate a lot of other programming. But again, most programmers have some sense of, you know, anxiety about what the future is going to look like, but mostly they're like, this is amazing. I am yeah, 10 times more productive. Yeah. Don't ever take this away from me. There's not a lot of people that use it and say like, turn this off, you know? Yeah, so I, I think, uh, so to speak to the psychology of terror is more like, this is awesome. This is too awesome, I'm it's scared. Awesome. Yeah, there is a little <laughs> bit of- coffee tastes too good. <laughs> you know, when Kasparov lost to Deep Blue, somebody said, and maybe it was him, that like chess is over now. If an AI can beat a human at chess, then no one's going to bother to keep playing, right? Because like, what's the purpose of us or whatever? That was 
30 years ago, 25 years ago, something like that. I believe that chess has never been more popular than it is right now. And people keep wanting to play and wanting to watch. And by the way, we don't watch two AIs play each other, no. which would be a far better game in some sense than whatever else. But that's that's not what we choose to do. Like we are somehow much more interested in what humans do in this sense. And whether or not Magnus loses to that kid, then what happens when two much, much better AIs play each other? Well, actually, when two AIs play each other, it's not a better game by our definition of better. Because we just can't understand it. No, I think I think they just draw each other. I think the human flaws, and this might apply across the spectrum here, with the AIs will make life way better, but we'll still want drama. We will. That's we'll for sure. We'll still want imperfection and flaws, and AI will not have as much of that. Look, I mean, I hate to sound like utopic tech bro here, but if you'll excuse me for three seconds, like the 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 level of the increase in quality of life that AI can deliver is extraordinary. We can make the world amazing and we can make people's lives amazing. We can cure diseases. We can increase material wealth. We can like help people be happier, more fulfilled, all of these sorts of things. And then people are like, oh, well, no one is going to work. But people want status. People want drama. People want new things. People want to create. People want to like feel useful. Um, people want to do all these things. And we're just going to find new and different ways to do them, even in a vastly better, like unimaginably good standard of living world. 